Andrew, we're still waiting for one more in person and then we'll uh, get started. Okay, that sounds good. Can you hear me? Well, we can hear you. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. everyone tonight and call to order the uh, August 11th regular meeting of the Webster Groves Board of Adjustment. Tom, would you please uh, hold the commission, hold the board? I mean, take take the roll call for the board. I will, yes. Randy Spring. Here. B.J. McFellow. Here. Andrew Pottis. Andrew. Here. Zoo, yeah. Deb Solver. Here. And Tom Walsh, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, this evening, we'll, we have three cases and we'll do each one separately. The order of presentation, as Mara said, the city will make their case, then we'll ask for the applicant and any anyone else who's in favor to uh, address the, the board. Then we'll have the opportunity for anyone who's opposed to the application to speak. We will close the public session uh, and then the board will will discuss the uh, the matter and make a recommend make a decision. These proceedings are recorded, so you do need to speak clearly and one at a time. If you want to address the board, you'll need to come up to the to the podium. Uh, we will uh, approval will take four out of the five board members approval. And please try not to be redundant or repetitive in your comments. Um, Tom, would you please read the powers relative to the. Uh, to variances? I will. When by reason of exceptional narrowness, shallowness, or shape of a specific piece of property as of September 20th, 1956, or by reason of exceptional topographical conditions or other extraordinary or exceptional situation or condition of a specific piece of property, which condition is not generally relevant for the neighborhood, the strict application of the area regulations of this zoning code would result in peculiar and exceptional practical difficulties to our exceptional or undue hardship upon the owner of such property. The board is hereby empowered to authorize upon an appeal related to such property variation from such strict application so as to relieve such difficulties and hardships. Thank you. Would you please read the first petition on the docket this evening? It's docket 2379, a petition submitted by the Mozzarella Living Trust for an application for variance from section 53.073B1 of the Zoning Code of the City of Western Groves. The applicant is requesting a variance of 12 feet from the minimum required 30 foot north 
front yard setback as recorded on the subdivision plot in order to construct an addition located 18 feet from the north front lot line. The property is located at 132 St. John Avenue within the A4 7,500 square foot residential district. Thank you. Mr. Bontrager, you want to go ahead? Yes. Uh, Give it less first. Yeah. So before we start, uh, for the purposes of, of um, uh, this petition, I move to admit exhibits one through, it's 10 as well, right? 10 being the PowerPoint. Um, eight is the PowerPoint and nine is the zoning code. Okay, exhibits one through nine. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we'd ask Mara Perry to testify on behalf of the city. Would you please raise your right hand? Uh, do you swear that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please go ahead. Could you state your name for the record? Mara Perry. Are you employed by the city of Webster Groves? Yes, I am. And what capacity? Director of Planning and Development. What are your duties in that position? To administer and execute <coughs> zoning regulations. Through your work with the city, are you familiar with 132 St. John Avenue? Yes, I am. Is that within city limits? It is located in the city. And what zoning district is it located? It's located in the A4 7,500 square foot residence district. What is the applicant's request under docket number 2379? The applicant's requesting a variance of 12 feet from the minimum required 30 foot north front yard setback as recorded on the subdivision plat in order to construct an addition located 18 feet from the north front lot line. What municipal code sections apply to that request? So the code section is 53.073 B1. Uh, the front yard setback that states lots that have been legally platted with an established front yard setback shall follow the recorded setback. Can you explain uh, the existing conditions of the property? Yes. Um, so the house on the property was built in 1954. Um, it was part of a plat that actually was a series of two plats. Originally, it was a plat that included um, the street along St. John, and then later it was taken out of that plat and moved into a second plat um, that was platted with the uh, subdivision to its east. Um, but it still remains that there was a road that was established to the north of the original plat. Um, you can see that street um, that's labeled as Putnam Street, um, which was supposed to go basically along the edge of this property line on the east of St. John and along the edge of the property line of the property on the opposite side. Um, again, only just one, uh, one house lot on either side. Um, it was never developed and remains as what we would consider a paper street, which means that on paper, it still is established as a street and it is established as right of way. It's still established with the idea that there is the possibility that utilities could go through it. Um, however, because it's never been developed, um, there is nothing there. It's basically just grass and trees. Mm -hmm. Um, the way that the plat was recorded, and again, there were two plats. There was the original plat for the St. John Street and Putnam Street, and it had lots on either side. And then later, this side of the street from Putnam down to Kirkham was um, platted with a secondary plat. So this other plat is what it was actually platted under a second time um, later in time. Um, and it has recorded front yard setbacks both from St. John and from Putnam. Um, and both those recorded setbacks are 30 feet. Um, because of the required 30 foot uh, secondary front setback, um, the house is currently located, the back corner of it is located exactly at that 30 foot front yard setback. Mm -hmm. um, and so the applicants have requested the ability because it is a very, um, not a very deep lot um, for the ability to be able to build an addition um, to the north, which would put them into that 30 foot front yard setback. Um, so they've requested a 18 foot uh, setback uh, request for the ability to build a single story addition to the north side of the house. It will also give them the ability to, because again, they have essentially no yard in the back, um, they would be able to put a detached garage in the rear yard and still meet the 10 foot separation from the house and the five foot setbacks from both the side and rear. Um, so they've established and requested the 18 foot secondary front yard setback. Um, I've identified it on the PowerPoint, um, the addition uh, being proposed, as you can see from the rear in blue, 
um, with the green line being where the recorded setback is at that back corner and the red line being where they would propose. It's also identified on here. Mm. Anything you'd like to add as to uh, the variances that were requested? Nothing additional to add. City has nothing further. I have a question. I'm not sure it's germane to this discussion tonight, but would it be possible for uh, for the owner of this property and the owner of uh, 143 St. John to uh, to request that to go to go through this the street vacation process? So we have um, talked through that with the applicants. Um, the other property owner is not willing uh, to go through the process because of the ex the, the survey expense or there's multiple not, reasons. Um, multiple reasons. Um, they're not anticipating that Putnam Street will ever be improved, are they? The city is not anticipating that it would ever be improved. Okay. Um, but the requirement to vacate has to be that the property goes to both property owners down the center. Um, and then it also has to have the engineering done, which the city cannot do for the mm. plat. So, so there would be some, some expense. There's cost involved. Yeah, so the there's some expense that needs to be done. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the other property owner is, is unwilling. Um, and the city does not feel that, um, you know, establishing a, a setback off of a, a street that will not be connected through um, is necessarily, you know, doesn't make sense. Does anyone else have any questions, other questions for, for the planning director? Yeah, could you expand on that last thought there? For... Um, so typically in a district like this, it would be a six foot side yard setback. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, when you look at a paper street that's not gonna be developed, um, we have a number of paper streets in the city, but because um, residents on both sides are unwilling to sometimes take uh, ownership of that property, it remains under the city. Um, and so we have a lot of issues with things like this where someone is trying to do something and they can't because another neighbor is, is unwilling to go through the process. Um, and so when it comes to something like this, you know, if there was a way for us to administratively say, sure, the setback would typically be six feet, um, we, would, we would move forward with something like that. We're always looking for ways that we could potentially just move forward with things without going through this process. Right. Um, but there there really isn't anything because it's platted. Mm -hmm. Just one comment. Mark? Even if the city wanted to do this, I don't see where the street would actually go. Yeah, it won't be able to connect. And the I mean, other, you mean, one, you mean if the street, is, ever, if the if city ever wanted to improve it? Where would it and it's go? only 20 feet wide, which is not yeah. anywhere near standard right away. Yeah. No. The other portion of Putnam, many years ago was vacated and given to both property owners. So at this point, this is the only piece that's left. So, it's, so it's, fundamentally it's landlocked in a way. Um, it can connect to the street. It can, it I mean- still could connect. Yeah, but there's really, there. There's no at this point in time, there's no proper connections. Thank you. Any other questions for Mara? Who's here this evening for DACA 2379? I, I do have okay. one question. Yeah. So if they do that, that build out and it's still the city's property, um, will any expense be occurred by Webster Groves? So they're not going onto the city's property. All they're going is closer to that on their own property. So there's nothing that's going to be incurring. Right. Perfect. Two front rooms. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, would you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please state your name and make your presentation. My name is Mark O'Brien, architect, and um, I think it's pretty clear you refer to it as a street and a front yard setback, but I don't think anybody who would ever happen to look at the front yards here would see this side yard as a front yard, so the hardship's clear. There's a front yard setback being applied to a side yard, and we're just asking for a zoning code that says our side yard's the same as everybody else's side yard. So, you know, in the 18 foot, I guess that gets us to build the addition that they wanna do. So that's really, that's all that's needed. Does anyone have any questions for, for the petitioner? Yeah, just out of curiosity and really is probably off point. Uh, did that house have any flooding or anything with this recent curve? I don't believe so. Oh no, St. John's up, it's, it's up a yeah. hill. Oh, okay. It's at the top good, of the hill. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Watch all your friends and my compliments. <laughs> That's all I have. 
Any other questions? No. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else here tonight who wants to speak in favor of docket 2379? Yes. Is there anyone, uh, Mara, there's no one online that wants to, I mean, I know the petitioner, oh. but there's no one else that wants to speak. Let me in, check really quick, sorry. For, uh, of docket 2379? No, no one Any, else. Anyone in, in opposition to docket 2379? And uh, seeing none and hearing none, we'll close the uh, public session for board discussion. Does anyone want to make a, a motion to start the discussion? So moved. Well, a, a motion to approve docket 2379. Make a motion to approve docket. Uh, uh, do we have uh, uh, Do we have a second? Second. 2376. 79. Oh, 79. 70, yeah, it's out of okay. sure. well, right. I, I make a motion to approve docket 2370. And I second that. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Does anyone want to make have a, have a comment? Well, I think that there's exceptional hardship here. I would agree. So officially, it's a corner lot. And with what we've just described about the street, it's not there. The paper street, but it uh, puts a hardship on the future uh, to have your house. That uh, when, when, when they probably could do so probably if it was a side so. Yeah, I think they're um, they're they're interfered with by this plat and other than that everything seems totally reasonable it doesn't seem that yeah i mean we're putting the land to higher better use uh you know perhaps less stress for the state or for Webster groves to cut that sort of thing um and it, it seems absolutely reasonable and i think a variance should be granted i i would also suggest that they um maybe there may be a um a situational hardship in that the uh, other affected property owners not willing to um, to to seriously consider the vacation of, of Putnam Avenue at this time. So um, the city's indicated that that there's no plan to um, to ever improve the the right of way of Putnam Avenue and create a street. Um, are we ready uh, to call the, to call the question? I'll call the question. Um, all in favor of docket 2379, please say aye. 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 And all opposed? Um, Tom, would you please poll the board? Randy Spring. Aye. PJ Capello. Aye. Andrew Pottis. Aye. Kevin Salberg. Aye. And Tom Walsh. Aye. Your, uh, your request has been approved. You can see city staff during regular business hours for your next steps. Thank you. Tom, would you please read the next item into the into the record, docket 2377? Talk about item 2377, petition submitted by William A. and Patricia M. Richards for an application for variance to section 53.053C1 of the zoning code of the city of West Grove. Is requesting a variance of 1.0 feet from the minimum 9.0 feet from the north side lot line. The property is located at P12 South Elm Avenue within the A2 15,000 square foot residential district. Mr. Benchrager? Uh, to begin, uh, we would Make note that exhibits one through 10 should be included in the record uh, for this application. And then we would uh, have Mara Perry testify on behalf of the city. Mara, you've already been sworn. Please go ahead. Could you please state your name for the record? Mara Perry. And are you employed by the city of Webster Groves? Yes, I am. In what capacity? Director of Planning and Development. What are your duties in that position? To administer and execute zoning regulations. Through your work with the city, are you familiar with 212 South Elm Avenue? Yes, I am. Is it within city limits? Yes, it is. And in what zoning district within the city is it, is it located? It's in the A2 15,000 square foot residence district. What is the applicant's request in docket number 2377? The applicant is requesting a variance of one foot from the minimum required 10 foot north side yard setback 
in order to construct a one-story addition located nine feet from the north side lot line. Uh, what municipal code sections apply to this request? Um, it's 53.053C1. Um, it is a side yard setback. Um, the minimum, uh, there shall be a side yard on each side of the building have a width of not less than 10 feet. Can you describe the existing conditions of the property? So yes, the existing conditions of this particular property, the house was built in 1900. Um, the house was built very close to, or uh, you know, to the very north side of the entire lot. Um, as you can see on the slide here, the uh, house is highlighted in yellow. Um, the green line is essentially the setback line that is established of where they can build within uh, the lot. Um, the house, which you can see in this plan here, has a required 10 foot uh, side yard setback. Um, and uh, they're planning to do an addition to the south of the property, um, but there was one small area that they wanted to continue their addition, um, and that area was on the north side. Um, so you can see in this little area here, the green line is the required 10 foot setback. Um, the red line is the required or is the requested nine foot setback. And I'm gonna zoom in a little closer. Um, you can see in yellow, that's the area where they would like to expand um, on the very back corner of the house. Um, and in the photographs here, um, the, the back door in the photograph in the lower left corner, you can see the back door on the rear elevation, um, which is facing to the east. Um, they're expanding out in that area um, and they need to expand one foot to the north um, in the same essential area right through here. So the request is for one foot. Um, that's it. Does the city consider that uh, minuscule? I'm sorry, what? Would the city consider that minuscule, just the one foot? I don't think I don't think that's really that's really germane here. I mean, yeah, that's it's, ten, it's a ten percent of the required setback. Um, my question is: this new addition will line up with the existing house, right? The new addition will line up the, the new existing house. The new addition is no closer to the affected property line than the majority of the existing house, right? That is correct. Anyone else have any comments? Any questions from Laura? No. So, so if you were to pull it back a foot, you're still not, you're not in line with the existing, existing structure. And it, it just right. is a cutback. Yeah, I mean, right. Okay. I mean, cause, because- That's, uh, well, yeah, that's what I read. I was like, trying to understand. It, looks, because, it looked like the back of the house sort of jogs right. to, the, to the south. And so, and so what they're wanting to do is- It's just, it evens it all out. Evens it out and yeah. at least. With and then there's addition. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Who's here this evening for docket 2377? I am here. Good evening. Could you please raise your right hand? Yes, ma'am. You solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you so much. Please state your name and go ahead. Michael Killeen. And go ahead. Okay, I'm used to. I'm on one of these boards in the city, and we have to give addresses and all. That, so <laughs> sorry. Um, I assume you're the art, the design professor. Yes, ma'am. I'm the architect with Colleen Studio Architects, and uh, thank you for your time tonight. Um, the um, testimony um, that we just listened to is is correct, except for the depth. We're actually only going for about just over seven inches to to yeah, just to get those walls to line up, and it all has to do with the kitchen. So it's the smallest addition I've done in my entire career. It's seven inches by 10 <laughs> foot, three and three quarter. And, and the, the reason for it, the hardship is what you want to hear tonight is um, they are trying to expand their kitchen because they have multi-generational uh, groups living here, the, the grandparents, their kids and some other kids. And it's just too darn tight in there. And what you guys noted about the jogging of the house, you can right. imagine trying to get kitchen cabinets in there, you know, first world problems, right? But, you know, it's still a hardship. And I would say the hardship itself is the, the setback line, I, I suppose, would have been established after the house was built. 
Oh yeah. Right. That's so all we're trying to do is say. just scooch this thing out. So the walls align so we can get the cabinets in there. We looked at other options. Do we build a, go out into the backyard, but you know, that pushes things farther away. It's almost, almost like you're on a train car now, you know, and so it'd be farther back. So we're just trying to get that additional seven inches. So we don't have the jog and they can have a little bit more room in their kitchen. So we looked at additions that way. You can't obviously go into the front yard and to go south would be rebuilding an entire new kitchen, which is just wasn't feasible. And they already have a patio over there. So um, other things to add on this addition, there's a there's a little roof. I don't know if, we, can, can I request a, a slide up there? The, your picture slide? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the picture on the bottom left, you see up here? Is it okay if I go address yeah. the rear sure. view? Here. Right here. Yes, this one here. So the addition would be again seven inches that way. And oh. it would be tucked beneath that little roof that's already there. So you barely even know what's happening. But it would just make a world of difference for them. So and then you can see it would barely be noticeable here from the front. It would just be it's not going to change the roof line or anything. No, right no, right we, we, we just tuck it underneath that roof so we won't. Um, so on behalf of my clients, I just hope that you'd consider this small adjustment to the setback. And I realize it's, it's not the biggest hardship in the world, but it, 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 it there is a, a slight one there because it, I would say because the, of when the, um, building was built, that setback line wasn't there. Anyone, so I've got this jog. Anyone have any questions for, uh, any questions for, for the petitioner? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else, either in the audience or online, who'd like to speak in favor of Docket 2377? Um, anyone opposed to Docket 2377? Hearing none and seeing none, we'll close the, uh, the discussion for uh, public discussion and move to, to board session. Would someone like to make a motion for Docket 2377 so we can discuss it? I'll second. Thank you. Um, well, I think the the issue is that they the the variance is is not going to make the majority of any part. It's it the majority of the house is already nine foot from the setback, and this lines it up. Um, I think the hardship is the location of the house on this pretty big lot mm -hmm. uh, that was clearly built prior to the establishment of the zoning ordinance. Exactly. I don't know how much they're gonna get out of it, but if taking seven inches uh, makes a world of difference, I, I think it, it's absolutely reasonable. It's within the line of the house, which, so it's not taking up any further, I mean, in line of the porch uh, ceiling. We're not going past that. We're really not changing the structure much um, other than the setback. I, I think it's completely warranted. You know, I would agree with that, Chuck. Sometimes we see in these cases where people try to fill an extra couple of feet to here, but they're staying right in line with the house. I think that's a reasonable thing. I would agree. Um, shall we call for the question? I'll call the question. All in favor of docket 2377, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, Tom, would you please poll the board? Randy Sprague. Aye. DJ Capello. Aye. Andrew Pottis. Aye. Debbie Salmer. Aye. And aye, Tom Wilkes. Uh, your motion has, uh, your request has been approved. Uh, uh, you'll need to see city staff during regular business hours tomorrow um, or late after tomorrow about um, about your next steps. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, would you please read um, the next the next and last docket yes. item? Yeah. Docket, is, docket item is number 2378. A petition submitted by Eric and Mary Harhausen for an application for variance for section 53.073C2 of the zoning code of the city of Webster Grove. The applicant is requesting a variance of 3.0 feet from the minimum required 
0.08 west side yard setback and ordinance construct a deck and stairs located 2.0 feet from the west side lot line. The property is located at 840 Atlanta Avenue within the A475 residence. Thank you. Um, Mr. Buntrager? Uh, before we start, I'd note uh, we, for the record, we're using exhibits one through nine uh, for the purposes of this application. Uh, and we would have Mara Perry testify on behalf of the city. Please go ahead. <laughs> Could you please state your name for the record? Mara Perry. Are you employed by the city of Webster Groves? Yes, I am. In what capacity? Director of Planning and Development. And what are your duties in that position? To administer and execute zoning regulations. Through your work with the city, are you familiar with 840 Atalanta Avenue? Yes, I am. Is that within city limits? Yes, it is. And what zoning district within the city is that property located? It's in the A4 7500 square foot residence district. What is the applicant's request in docket number 2378? The applicant's requesting a variance of 3.0 feet from the minimum required 5.0 feet west side yard setback in order to construct a deck and stairs located two feet from the west side lot line. What's the municipal code section that applies to this request? The code section is 53.073C2. Um, this is the side yard setback that requires a minimum when the residential structure is existing as of September 20th, 1956, which are closer to the side property line than six feet, may be enlarged provided any addition is no closer to the side property line than 10% of the lot width at the front yard setback. Uh, can you describe the existing conditions of the property? Yes, um, the house was built in 1924. Um, and uh, the house I have identified in sort of an orange color. Um, but the point of note is that the house itself meets the five foot side yard setback. The problem runs with a, um, a door that is existing on the side of the house. And due to the topography, that door sits so many feet off the ground that in order to exit out of that door, you have to exit into the side yard, have to have at least a minimum um, area to get out of that door and then turn for the stairs. Um, and um, the, the structure was existing um, prior to the owners purchasing the property. Um, and uh, in order to, they can't just renovate it, it needs to be taken down and rebuilt. Um, once it's taken down, the nonconformity is no longer in existence, um, which means that we've got to go through this process um, when we have a nonconformity, when it's completely structurally altered and removed. And even if it's going back in the exact same location, that non-conforming um, uh, portion of the house is no longer in, uh, in right. compliance with the code. Um, so you can see the photos of the stair and the existing um, portion, which is very minimal, just enough to be able to get past the side of the house and then be able to get down. Um, so the required five side yard setback, if you can see here, um, and I think I zoomed in closer. Nope, I didn't. Um, the required five foot side yard setback um, uh, is essentially in the middle of the existing uh, structure that they're trying to rebuild. Um, and so that requires them to request the, the setback um, to be two feet um, from the side yard in order to build it back in its existing location. So it is back in its existing location. That's correct. Do we have any idea of the age of this? I don't think we do of the of when I mean I would assume the house is always you know the house was built in the in the twenties right. um, so the door um, I would assume has been there since the twenties so I'm sure over the years there's been various um, probably people have gone and redone right. uh, the structure um, we did look through our files and we didn't find any older variances. Um, we see that a lot. Sometimes people do repairs over the years, then, you know, certain parts of the structure, they might repair one section and then another year repair another, but they did um, want to take the whole thing down. Um, and so it did have to go through this process. Okay. And is, what's the, the, the nature of the structure? Is it sound as, as we say? Or, or... You'll have to ask the applicants that Okay. in regards to their need to to take it down. I, I think I read that they had to make the deck so wide so the door would open. 
yes, the, it needs to meet the minimum requirements so that that you can get out onto it and be able to. You know, there are minimum down the stairs. Is it is it five feet? Is it sixty inches? About what you what you need for, you know, I mean, technically that's that's what you need for a wheelchair. But and obviously because there's steps, this is a wheelchair. Uh, handicap yeah, accessible, but it's still the same kind of thing for safety to get in. For and safety out. to get in and out, you need a minimum distance, which would include sometimes the door swing, sometimes just in general being able to get out of the space and be able to get out and and move. And for I mean, clarity, I mean, I that would be established think... by the fire department, correct? No, that would be established by the building code. Oh, the building but, code. But I don't think okay. five feet is an excessive. Um, no, you know, no, no, no. It's it's not excessive no. at all. Does anyone else have any qu other questions for Mara? Nope. Who's here this evening for docket 2378? I, I am Eric Good Kurtz. evening. Would you I, please raise your right hand? Uh, do you solemnly swear that the, the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Would you please state your name and then make your presentation? Yep. Eric Harhausen, one of the homeowners. Um, uh, yeah, our, I don't have a lot to add, just that we're replacing a current existing wooden deck with a synthetic deck, um, same exact footprint coming out of the house, just the five feet kind of needs to be there for the width of the deck. Um, and yet it, it is replacing the current deck, not an addition or an added deck that wasn't there. And that, that door is second floor from the back. So we need something there. So. And, and you're replacing this because you, you feel that it, it needs to be replaced. Is there, are there, are there, is there rot issues or you just want something that's lower maintenance? Yeah, both. Uh, it started to deteriorate about a year or so after we moved in, which was about six years ago. It's wooden. And so it, as it gets waterlogged, it wasn't painted with a sealant. And so it's gotten worse and worse over the years. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'd rather not repair that. We'd rather get something that lasts for the life So it's of the becoming house. a nuisance. Yeah. Essentially. And, and, I would note that we received a letter from uh, from your neighbor. I assume this Correct. is the yep. affected neighbor yep. uh, who who has who you talked to, and he's aware of what you're doing. And Correct. Yep. Does anyone else have any other questions for the petitioner? No. Is there anyone else uh, who'd like to speak in favor of the Docket twenty three seventy eight? Is there no one's online? No one's online. And there's no one who wants to speak in opposition to 2378? No. Uh, okay, we'll close this, um, the public session and move to board discussion. Uh, could we have a motion for docket 2378 so we could uh, move forward with discussion? I'll move that we approve variance and requested docket item 2378. Second. A second, second. PJ, thank you. Um, does anyone have any, want to make any comments? I think this is completely reasonable. Uh, I think that makes no sense to have to piecemeal this together to keep it together. Uh, if they have the money and the wherewithal to make it a safer, better structure, I think it's in everybody's best interest. I, I, I would agree. I think it's just a typical of what happens is you buy the house, you have the thing, you realize you need to fix it, and now you can't. <laughs> and 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 that's and I, and I don't think that's the intent of it. So I, I I really believe that that we should approve something like this. And the bottom line is they have to have an exit strategy. In the <laughs> right, right. Which I think is also very yes. important. Yes. Which I think I heard one of you guys say that was a hardship, right? The hardship, I think it is the, hardship, hardship. Yeah. the hardship is the, the first step location to of <laughs> the um, of the of the back door, which is onto the side yard and is seven or eight feet. And certainly, from a safety above, standpoint, above grade. ability to exit through that door is important. Right, I think it's a, I think it's a building code requirement. But anyone else have any additional questions before we call the question? I'll call the question. All in favor of docket 2378, please say aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? Tom, would you please pull the board? Randy Spray. Aye. DJ Petrello. Aye. Andrew Potters. Aye. Deb Salberg. Aye. Tom Walsh, aye. Your request has been approved. You'll need to see city staff uh, after tomorrow, starting tomorrow during regular business hours for your next steps. Thank you very much. You're gonna love the composite deck, by the way. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, before before we adjourn, we uh, need to discuss the.
date of the next meeting. Um, I believe Mara has has asked that rather than having it on um, on the normal um, second Tuesday in September, uh, which would be September eighth, she would prefer to have it before Labor Day. Yes, and uh, on Tuesday the thirtieth rather than on a Thursday. Um, is that yeah okay. Yeah, I think everybody yeah, responded yes. Yes, and John, uh, who is not able to be here tonight, is traveling, but said he could be available on Zoom. Um, so we should be good. Yeah, yeah I, I'll definitely be available. Okay, perfect. So, so Thank Andrew, you. we shouldn't need you then, but uh, um, but we but we do appreciate you uh, being able to join us this evening. Uh, yeah, so no problem. Wish I could have joined you in person, but uh, had some well, child care issues. So yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, it was, I thought, I thought we did pretty well for three petitions this evening. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm glad, I'm glad you were able to join us by Zoom. Thank you. Um, so Mara, do we need to take any official action on the meet on the 30th? We, we do not because we don't have anything being pushed forward um, from the other date. Um, so we are good to adjourn and we're good. I will um, get the ad for the one item we have on to the paper uh, tomorrow so that it's in it meets all the requirements mm -hmm. and then we'll change all the posting and notifications and book the room and are you planning on having that meeting at seven on Tuesday I was unless you all wanted to change it I mean I, I'm fine either way I mean I can do seven just fine well I can't do uh, I can't do much before five I mean no you know, no I mean I could I could do set I could do seven I could do 6 30 or six, you know, I just need to know. So why don't I do this? I will send a quick email out tomorrow because now that I know it's the five of you, um, I, the only thing I don't know about John is he will be physically out of town. Right, so he and, might have commitments. Yeah, he seven. might have commitments before seven. So I can just confirm. And if not, we'll just make it for seven. I prefer seven because I'm going to be out of town coming back. Got oh, it. Okay, okay. okay. Well, then let's just say seven. 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 We'll make it seven. There's only one item on. Um, Not much different, six thirty to seven. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now we should be good. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Do you have a motion to adjourn. Or? Yes. We'll motion to adjourn. Motion to do that. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. You've been painting. You've been painting. You've got.